So there it is guys, so it's as stripped as it's going to be. Just a massive cleaning, cleaning exercise now. Um, there's also a load of parts that I need to powder coat. The Some of the brackets from behind the radiator are a little bit scabby just because of where they are on the bike. Even a bike that hasn't been used in the bad weather gets grubby under there. Same under the rear tail tidy paints pretty poor quality um, from new so I'm gonna redo the paintwork on the brackets and the bits and pieces underneath the real real rear I can't speak underneath the rear tail tidy um, so a bit of cerakoting coating to do a couple of little bits that need vapor blasting the oil cooler and yeah there's a little water outlet cover on the front of the barrels that needs doing just just make it as nice as I can so massive cleaning exercise now and now uh, get it back on the bench and start reassembling So she's had a proper clean so that suffix HD stuff is just brilliant because you haven't got a yeah there's a lot, a lot of sort of mechanical scrubbing needed it really it really gets in there and cleans it um, you've got to be super careful you don't leave it to dry on the paintwork um, so a combination of of I, I've got a what am I trying to say I've got a hot outside tap which I had installed to wash the dog years ago um, which is just brilliant for washing bikes because I'm when they're this stripped I'm not really keen on a pressure washer I, I, I'm not like anti pressure washer like a lot of people but I think there's a time and a place for it you got a filthy dirty motocross bike or something there's nothing better but for this sort of a cleaning task a, a pressure washer would just be completely overkill given how exposed a lot of it is so low pressure hot water and that suffix HD got to spend a little bit of time blocking off all the pipes you know there are places when they're this stripped you really don't want water to get in certain places um so yeah the suffix hd and then a little bit of scrubbing here and there just to like the front of the engine really was the only place i really got got busy with a scrubbing brush that's come up really nice so suffix hd rinse it off with hot water and then i this is just my process and you know do what you like and then i use wash and wax and I just soapy, hot soapy water it all, rinse it again, and then I blow the worst off with an airline. But when I was cleaning it, it was a couple of days ago, it was absolutely baking hot weather. So I just left it to bake in the sun so it was properly dry. And then I basically emptied a can of GT85 on it. So on all the electrical connectors, just I love GT85, use it on my mountain bikes all the time. It's blooming great stuff. Obviously, you've got to avoid the brakes and stuff. Um, but yeah, so she's super clean now. I just got to get on, do the seracoting of the parts. Um, everything else is clean, and then sort of start my reassembly. Um, excited, excited to hear it with that exhaust pipe. Yeah, super happy with the way the front of the engines come up. It's, it's. I'm not sure how well it's going to come out on this camera, but it's, it's pretty much brand new. There are a couple of tiny little marks, but it's by the time the exhaust pipes on and stuff, and you know, it's got all new bolts holding the headers on and. All the other little bits of vapor blast in the clips are all clean it's gonna look super duper cool yeah so that's that right so some cera coating and then assembly you can't beat a little bit of armor black cera coat so that's that done. So I'm almost ready for assembly. Now I've got a couple of little bits to vapor blast. That um, little water fitment thing for the front of the barrels and the oil cooler. Um, and then we're ready to start putting back together. There it is, guys. <clears throat> In one piece. So I'm super happy with the way it's turned out. It's um, it's taken me actually longer than I thought. I I kind of guesstimated it may be taking a couple of days, but I've 
yeah, you know how these things <laughs> tend to go on a bit. It's uh, it's probably been more like three and a half, four days. Just my fucking OCD is uncontrollable when it's my own thing, and I can't. You know what I mean? You know where I'm coming from. But anyway, it's turned out pretty much turned into the bike I wanted it to be. I've got what's left. I've still got the seat hump to do. I was going to make a little separate video of that. Um, just separate that out so people that are interested in putting one of those seat humps together or buying one, or, you know, just haven't got to troll through all my other listening to me waffle on. So I'll do a little seat hump assembly fitty video, which will obviously be a little bit short one. And then I'll do an insta. If I can, I'll lost the power of speech again. I'll do an installation video on the um, Clubman handlebars as well as a separate little video. So two little videos to come. And then we'll probably do a road testy one. We'll go and have a brew with Benji and. Yeah, just a bit of a out on the roady one, possibly maybe. I've got a another engine build series coming up, which is just I'm just about to start filming it. Don't get excited; you're not going to see it for probably the next month or six weeks. But it's a GS850, um, and it's going to be literally stripped to the crankcases, vapor blast everything, Cerakote complete rebuild you know make it new again probably electroplate all the bolts just make it beautiful so that's going to be i think probably the next big project that i'm going to be filming for the channel anyway i'm going on so hope you've enjoyed this little behind the scenesy bit um i'll see you on the next one cheers guys bye